afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to our mental health moment. My name's Jeff Hurley. I'm the MVP and PSC here at Camp V and with the Andrew Center. And we started off a few weeks ago talking about RAP, which is a wellness recovery action plan. And we we're talking about how we're going to take a few moments each week to kind of highlight the five key concepts of RAP and what makes it what it is. Uh, we covered hope, personal responsibility. And this week, we're going to cover education. And it's kind of funny sometimes when education is in a concept. Um, Maybe not, especially, you know, you don't have to have a four year degree to take care of yourself. You don't have to have any kind of special certificates to go out and learn how to take control of your wellness. And so when we talk about education, it's beneficial that you educate yourself and learn all you can about yourself. Um, you are the subject matter expert on yourself and you want to know what the essence of what makes you are so you can make sound decisions about wellness, medical treatment, lifestyle, career, relationships, living space, leisure time activities, and in, in all reality, all aspects of your life. Uh, about four or five years ago, there was an organizational psychologist named Tasha Urich, who really was attacking, I say attacking, I'm military, so those are my terms, but she was, she wanted to find out when he talks about knowing ourselves and what does that mean? What is self-awareness and what does it really mean to be aware of oneself? And what she found out in a survey that she conducted was that 95% of the people she interviewed and did questionnaires and talked to thought they were aware of themselves. And at the end of it, after doing the research and uh, doing the questionnaires and talking to them, that only 10 to 15% are actually truly aware of who they are in themselves. And when you say, what is self-awareness? Well, self-awareness is actually two-pronged. You have your internal self-awareness and you have external self-awareness. Your internal self-awareness is going to be your values, your philosophies, um, your thoughts, the things that make you you, a, a culmination of your experiences. Your external self-awareness is going to be how others see you. Now, that may also sound like self-absorption. The, the biggest difference there between self-awareness and self-absorption is self-absorption is being aware of yourself without a thought to others. So it is very different, even though there's two prongs on it. So... That was kind of alarming to me. You would sit there and go, do I know myself? Well, as humans, we grow. Um, we go through these major life milestones, whether that's a marriage, a divorce, having children, losing a child, losing a parent. Um, all these, we change. Every time that we adapt to something, we inevitably change something about us in the long run. So if you don't know who you are, I would highly suggest you take the time, figure out who you are, what makes you tick, what do you want? And, and to conclude, to conclude this topic about education and self-awareness, I just want to give you with five things um, that may be happening in your life that may show that you truly aren't self-aware. And one of those are you feel lost and you don't know what you want. If you don't know your values, your philosophies, uh, your desires, the roots of those desires, do you really know what you want to start with? You don't understand what you, you don't, I guess, you don't understand why you do what you do. So have you ever looked around in complete awe and just like woken up one morning and going, how did I end up here? How did I get in this position? How did I end up in this job that I don't like? How did I end up um, in a marriage that is unfulfilling? Whatever it may be. Number three, you hate being alone. You can't stand yourself or to be alone with your own thoughts. Now understand that knowing yourself and loving yourself are two different things, even though they're deeply intertwined. The fourth, you believe everything people say about you. When you don't have a clear sense of who you are, you tend to define yourself by the definitions of other people. And last but not least, you live according to other people's definitions. And what I mean by that, if you don't have an own clear definition of who you are and what you want, kind of like number four, we tend to steal or take the definitions that other people have applied to us. When in the a little different than four in that this is more of a, what is the Jones's definition of a happy life? What is your parents' definition of what is success? What is happiness? What is progress? So just remember that hope, personal responsibility, education, you know, the three out of these five concepts build up to a culmination that support each other. And just remember that RAP, the Wellness Recovery Action Plan, is not about recovering from something but recovering our wellness. And I hope you'll join next week as we cover support and self-advocacy on our last two parts of our wrap mental, wellness, mental health moments. And if you have any questions, comments, would like to see some content or would like me to expand even personally on some of the content we have delivered to you, 
just shoot me an email at jhurley, H-U-R-L-E-Y, at andrews, with an S, center.com, or to Casey, C-A-S-E-Y, at campvtyler.com, and we'll do our best to add your content or deliver some information that our audience is seeking to look. So don't forget, like every week, like, subscribe, get your notifications, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. the wellness reaction, wellness reaction action plan. We're gonna have to edit this last part. Hold up. I don't have my <laughs>